1953. The motion is not agreed to. Call on members' order of the day, number five. Patents and Vance Patents Amendment Bill, first reading. I call Dr. Palmjet Palmer. I move that the Patents Advancement Patents Amendment Bill be now read a first time. I nominate the Governance and Administration Committee to consider the bill. Madam Speaker, it is with immense pleasure I take this call in the first reading of my member's bill, the Patents Advancement Patents Amendment Bill. The timing for my bill to be drawn from the ballot was perfect. That was in the month of April, because it is in the month of April we observe the World Intellectual Property Day. Right. Madam Speaker, my bill is a substantial bill to address, to address a very important gap in our intellectual property protection legislation. Madam Speaker, I'm really passionate about supporting more and more research and development, more and more technological advancement, and this bill is a product of my passion to do more for small and medium enterprises and more technological advancement. So this bill is to allow incremental advancements that may not qualify for a standard patent to have intellectual property protection rights. Madam Chair, protecting ideas and advancements help New Zealand innovators and businesses and um, it will help them stand out on the international stage as well, not only locally. So this bill is to introduce a second tier patent system that is accessible and is quicker. And this is, as I said, for small and medium enterprises making incremental advancements that may or may not qualify for a standard patent under the Standard Patent Act, that is the Patent Act 2013. Madam Chair, with the introduction of a second tier patent system, the owners of the advancement patent will be able to enjoy innovator monopoly the same way the owners of uh, a standard patent can. So they can go out, if it is a product to be commercialized, they can go out, commercialize it uh, with reduced risk of it being copied or stolen. So Madam Chair, with this ability, um, New Zealanders will continue to benefit from the creativity and innovation that we have in our country. New Zealand is known to be a net importer of technology. We have heard this several times. Yes, New Zealand is a net importer of technology, but Madam Chair, I want to challenge our views, and I want to say that we don't want to be complacent. We don't want to accept the status quo. Because if we go out and see our innovators and businesses, we know that they are already doing really well, not just locally, but internationally too, and they are really eager and ready to lead us on international stage. But what we have to do is move along with these innovators and businesses. We have to provide the tools and means for these small businesses, researchers to do well so that we can shift our status of being a net importer of technology to actually becoming a trader of technology. So, Madam Chair, this won't happen without the help that is needed for small to medium enterprises. And protection of intellectual property is a very important tool for that. And people that are stuck in that mentality, I say to those people, they should come along and visit businesses that I see, our research institutes, our universities, our businesses doing great job. They are pushing New Zealand forward on the, on the innovation front. It's about we put our money where the mouth is and help to provide the means New Zealand needs for the future of our technological development. Madam Chair, I'm really fortunate to uh, be surrounded by um, uh, people that are always pushing ideas forward. But between a large number of people, the necessity of innovation is taken for granted. People don't realize how time consuming it is to come up with an idea and innovation and then take it to the next level. And um, it's not only that taking to the next level, but it's also about securing markets in a successful manner. And that is where the idea of intellectual property protection comes in, because you don't want to see someone else stealing your idea. So, Madam Chair, as I said, simply innovating isn't enough. Protecting our innovations is essential, and that is why my bill is important. Many um, innovations that would have qualified only for a second-tier patent in other countries were able to get a standard patent here in New Zealand under the old Patents Act, that is Patents Act 1953. But as we know that we reviewed our Patents Act 1953 and now we have a new Patents Act, that is Patents Act 2013, that was a good thing to do, bringing the level of invention in line with the international norm. But with that, uh, Madam Chair, what has happened, uh, Madam Speaker, what has happened is that um, 
that some of the incremental advancements uh, will have uh, nothing to fall back on when it comes to protecting, uh, protecting those advancements. So there is a gap, and this gap needs to be filled. This is to allow our small to medium enterprises to enjoy intellectual property rights. Madam Speaker, I believe that with increased investment in research and development, an increase in economic activity would follow. According to the World Intellectual Property Organization, there are 59 countries around the world that already have a second tier patent system. Yes, I repeat, 59 countries around the world already have some form of second tier patent system. So with so many countries already having a second tier patent system, it was my job while creating this bill that I looked at what worked and what didn't work in other countries. So I looked at some successful models in European countries, and I also very keenly looked at Australian innovation patent system for its reasons for being in the media. And we saw, um, Madam Speaker, that in Australia, the government decided to abolish, but then they decided not to. So that was a big push from small and medium enterprises in Australia. But for someone to do a direct comparison of my bill with Australian innovation system will be completely wrong. Because I want to highlight this, that there is no international consistency when it comes to second tier patent systems. We can adopt the second tier patent system according to our conditions, according to our uniqueness. So, Madam um, Speaker, as I said, that I learned from other countries what worked and what didn't work, so it was a great position I was in. So just to give some examples, in Australia, we know that un when it w underwent the review, we saw the biggest criticism for the Australian innovation patent system was that uh, it um, doesn't provide certainty. So uncertainty was a big issue in there because examination is optional in the innovation patent system in Australia. But if members will see my bill, examination is required at three years. And if it is not examined, it is going to lapse. So this also addresses another concern of other companies coming and filing patents to block innovation. So, Madam Speaker, that has been already addressed in my legislation. The second thing that was criticized in Australian innovation patent system was that it was difficult to know if it is, if it is um, already a certified patent. So in my proposal, I have made it very, very clear that it is going to be called a provisional advancement patent until it is certified and will be called an advancement patent only after certification. So, but as I said, there are some uh, things that are different from other countries as we are a small country, smaller economy, and our businesses, our researchers might take longer to secure funding to commercialize their prototype. So I have allowed slightly longer time than other countries, which is of 10 years for my um, advancement patent. So, Madam Speaker, it's really important to note that we are a small country, we have small businesses, and we need to do more for our small businesses so that they can thrive. To summarize, this bill will help innovation. This bill will help research and development. Most importantly, this bill will help um, startup companies this bill will help companies that are going through that very important phase, that growth phase. This is about supporting the ideas that start from garages, the ideas that start up on kitchen benches. Our businesses, 96% of our businesses are small to medium enterprises. Madam Chair, to allow innovation, we should not fear competition. I repeat, to allow innovation, we should not fear competition. I'm really hopeful that the government will take a bipartisan approach on this bill and support this bill to go to the select committee to allow the sector to have their say. This is not only about this bill. This is also about raising awareness about intellectual property protection rights in New Zealand. So, Madam Chair, I'm really hopeful that the government, if they wish to support small and medium enterprises, they want to increase the research and development, this is a perfect opportunity. So I urge government members to support this very important bill, and I support this bill and commend this bill to the House. Thank you, Madam Chair. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Madam Speaker. 
I call the Honourable Ian Lees-Galloway. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Can I start my contribution by acknowledging the...